In this video, we'll be discussing the middle cerebral artery, or MCA, which I've highlighted here in dark green. It's one of the terminal branches of the internal carotid artery. It immediately extends laterally to divide into its inferior and superior terminal branches. These terminal branches then send off a number of further branches which extend over the surface of the cerebral cortex. If we bring in the right cerebral cortex, we can see how that branch that we last introduced is extending over the surface. The inferior and superior terminal branches of the MCA, which we mentioned earlier, are hidden deep within the cerebral cortex. Specifically, they're embedded in the lateral fissure, or the sylvian fissure. Removing the gyrus directly beneath that, so there's the inferior terminal branch there. So again, the terminal branches of the MCA lie deep within the folds of the cerebral cortex. The branches from these terminal branches and typically extend over the external surface of the cerebral cortex. And to describe this morphology, the MCA is divided into four separate segments, M1 to M4, which are probably best understood with a, a 2D image like this. So here we have the internal carotid artery and the MCA branching off it. The M1 segment is what we have highlighted in dark green here, which extends from the ICA until its division into superior and inferior terminal branches. The M2 segment travels along the surface of the insular cortex and terminates at the level of the circular sulcus of the insula. Now, what I'm gonna do here is introduce an image which describes this area a bit more clearly. So you can see most medially we have the insular cortex. The sylvian sulcus takes us from the insular cortex to the external surface. Above and below the sylvian sulcus is the parietal and temporal operculum. Okay, so these are the sections of the brain abutting the sylvian sulcus. The M3 segment is the part of the MCA which travels over the parietal and the temporal operculum. Then the M4 segments extend across the external surface of the cerebral cortex. So this branch, which we looked at earlier, is one of the M4 segments. Let's remove the cerebral cortex and take things back to the beginning now. Again, the M1 segment of the MCA extends from the ICA, the internal carotid artery, until the bifurcation into its terminal branches. There are two sets of arteries which depart from the M1 segment, the first of which is the lenticulostriate arteries. These supply the basal ganglia, in particular, the lenticular nucleus and the striatum, giving the arteries its name. It also supplies large portions of the external and internal capsules. Let's bring in the superior and inferior terminal branches and now the other artery which is said to depart from M1 is the anterior temporal artery. In this model, it departs from the inferior terminal branch. That's the anterior temporal artery. Next, we have the lateral frontobasal artery, which supplies the basal or the inferior aspect of the frontal lobe. We then have a number of arteries named for the sulcus in which they run. The first is the artery of the prefrontal sulcus. We then have the artery of the precentral sulcus. Then the arteries of the central sulcus. And next, the arteries of the postcentral sulcus, the first of these to depart from the inferior terminal branch of the MCA. The precentral gyrus contains the primary motor cortex, and this is supplied by the artery of the precentral sulcus. The postcentral gyrus contains the primary somatosensory cortex, and is supplied by the artery of the postcentral sulcus. We then have the parietal branches, which supply the parietal lobe, and then the angular artery, which traverses the angular gyrus and contributes to the supply of the parietal lobe as well as the occipital lobe. We then have the middle and posterior temporal branches, which supply the temporal lobe, and we finish with this temporo-occipital branch most posteriorly.
If we bring back in the cerebral cortex now, all of these branches which we discussed are M4 segments of the MCA, meaning they traverse the external surface of the cerebral cortex. And you recall that the M2 and M3 segments are closely related to the insular cortex, which are brought in here just to, to demonstrate that relationship. Now, before we wrap up, let's discuss some anatomical variants of the MCA. In around 80% of the population, the MCA bifurcates into inferior and superior terminal branches, as we have here. The remaining 20% are made up of cases where the MCA trifurcates into superior, middle and inferior divisions. And then we have division into multiple smaller branches as well. Occasionally, in addition, we have an accessory MCA, which supplies the orbitofrontal part of the brain. And we'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you like this video and we'll see you next time.